We've all heard that humanity is in serious trouble, that our consumer-driven, polluting economy is destroying our planet. So why do we just keep going? Are we just mindless zombies? Or could we all be trapped in an unsustainable economy by something we don't discuss and barely even notice? This short video demonstrates how we have indeed been trapped by the very first privatisation. The privatisation of land. The video will then explore an alternative approach to land. Land held in common as a basis for sustainable housing and participation. So why is private land so critically important? Well, many notable people in history have said that it's absolutely central. Market pioneers John Locke and Adam Smith put land privatisation, known as land enclosures, at the very foundation and starting point of capitalism. Prominent criticisms of capitalism also zero in on private land. For instance, Prudhoe's central anarchist slogan proclaimed, property is theft. Marx declared that his theory of communism could be summed up in a single sentence, abolition of private property. Did you know that the game Monopoly was actually invented to demonstrate the fundamental social injustice of land privatisation? So, how does this land privatisation affect us today? Well, unless you inherit, you have to rent or mortgage, and this is no small thing. Land for housing is by far the biggest lifelong cost you'll face. Did you know that the term mortgage actually comes from the Latin debt until death? Even if you decided not to participate in this economic system, to build your own house and grow your own food, you'd first need to buy the land. And paying for this would involve a lot of dropping into our current market system. The key point here is that because we all have to pay for land, we're all forced into demanding whatever market opportunity we can get. This drives endless and unsustainable consumer growth. While green technology will be an important part of a more sustainable future, greening this endless and increasing production and consumption is simply not possible. So, in summary, there's a powerful connection between the privatisation of land that we all need for housing and our endless and unsustainable dependence on economic growth. So how could we find a way out of this unsustainable cycle? Well, stepping right back, the first thing we could ask is, why do we so unquestionably accept that land is private and has to be paid for? After all, land wasn't created by the market, or the state for that matter. Just like air and water, land comes from nature, and we all need it to survive. So, and here's the big question, could we break this cycle of dependence on unsustainable market growth? by having a different approach to land. Well, actually, there is a history of a different approach to land. In this alternative, people do not own land, but rather live and are productive on land commons. Far from fringe, this happens to be the oldest and most widespread model of economic productivity. However, many people in the developed West have simply forgotten about our heritage of living and being productive on land commons, a heritage that largely ended with the enclosure of the commons in Europe by the 18th century and an enclosure that spread through the world through a capitalist colonisation. With so many major problems on the horizon, surely it's time to balance everyone's dependence on economic growth with a new approach to land. This might all sound pretty huge, but there are ways to develop urban land commons and we're closer to an option than you might think. At this website, Check out one idea for a work and housing land common that could help balance our total dependence on the market and could flourish in a modern and urban setting.